morning <clears throat> welcome to morning practice as always please practice according to your um, abilities and comfort level and modify make the modifications as you need to and feel free to do the variations if you feel comfortable so as always let's begin sitting tall supremely still close the eyes go inward before creation what existed God was always there in the midst of it all and will still be there even beyond the ends of this universe merge with that highest supreme consciousness now let's now do the mantra om three times to attract divine attention <clears throat> imagine you are everywhere <clears throat> Fix your mind on God alone. Oh. Rest your thoughts in God alone. And in God you will live hereafter. Of this there is no doubt. May all beings everywhere be happy and free from suffering and enjoy this practice to our senses. May we always have a strong desire for that knowledge that liberates us from pain and suffering. And may we cherish no ill feelings against each other. Only peace, love, joy and compassion. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Start off by opening up those energy sources that are like gateways for the energy to pass through more efficiently. We're starting at the roots of the spine and as we go up we also visualize a color and then we just imagine that that gateway is opening up <coughs> for the energy to just pass all the way up to the top, to the, to the top chakra at the crown. So start at the bottom, <coughs> excuse me, at the root chakra, Muladhara, color is red. And so seven tones, the same seed mantra as um, the same seed mantra for that, um, for that energy center. Lam, 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 repeat. Lam 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 Repeat Now the next one up at the sacral region The sacral chakra Svahistana The color is orange Vam 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 Next at the navel chakra, Manipura or uh, yellow Ram 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 Next, the heart and the chata, the and the hatha, the color is green. Yum, 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 yum. Yum, 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 yum. Next, base of the throat, Vishuddha, color is blue. Hum 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 
हम 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 Next at the third eye, Anya, the color is indigo. Om 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 And finally the crown, the color is violet. The, the name of it is Sahasrara. One long sustained om. Just allow the breath to carry the sound through until you run out of breath. Om. Together again. Take a moment to just keep hearing the Om in your mind, the ultimate mantra that contains all the sounds, the colors, and the vibrations of the universe. Reflect upon the infiniteness of those of, of those characteristics of that ultimate mantra. And remain established in that infiniteness. Representative of the infinite grace the love, the wisdom of God. And now through the practice we celebrate that infiniteness as we see that infiniteness in all the forms. Imagine you are everywhere, imagine you are in all beings and all beings are within you. So now let's begin the practice. Come to standing. We're gonna start off by charging the body up with the earth's breath, of the earth's energy. Stand with the feet about hip, uh, hip width apart. Bring your arms up over the head. From the soles of feet, inhale all the way up to the fingertips. Imagine you're pulling the earth's energy right up through the body. Only all the fingertips, hold the breath. Exhale all the way back down to the soles of the feet. Feels the energy flushing right down through the body. Inhale, imagine again you're using your attention to attract all the energy up right through the fingertips, right through to the fingertips. Then holding it all there at the fingertips. Again, suspend the breath. Exhale all the way back down. Last time, inhale, feel your energy rise up right through the body. Feel yourself being flooded by that energy. Then holding all the fingertips, hold the breath. Exhale all the way back down. Feel fully charged as the energy moves all the way down and flushes all the way down throughout the body and make use of that energy all throughout the practice. And now release the arms. We'll continue with the exercises to promote even more uh, release of the impurities through the heat. You do the exercises with enthusiasm, do the breathing with vigor in order to get the full uh, benefit and the full extent of the, of, the, of the benefit. Inhale, arms up, exhale down, continue. Inhale straight up with the arms, exhale, pull down. Spread the fingers as the arms come up and form fists as the arms come down. Now in front of the body, same with the hands, inhale, 
and exhale, pull in. Now release, arm swings. Try to throw the arms back behind the ears. And then release. Arms cross across the chest. Exhale, throw them back. Alternate cross each time the arms come across the chest. Now, arms up over the head, inhale, exhale, throw the body down. Next, come up again, reach the arms up over the head, exhale, come down to squat. If you can't go down all the way, just come down as far as you can. Be mindful of the knees. Always practice according to your condition. Come right back up. Elbows out to the side and twist from side to side. Release the arms. Next one again incorporates a squat. Four movements. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. And continue. Next, arms in front of the body, at the height to the shoulders, inhale, circle around to the front. Exhale, pull them in, punch right back out. And then the arms by the sides of the body. Same movement, but circle in a quarter. Inhale, all the way to the front. Exhale, pull in and drop the arms down. and then release. Side bending, bring the toes out a little bit further so they're, they're on the edge of the, uh, beyond the edge of the mat. Left arm up, inhale. Exhale, bend to the right, right arm up, inhale. Exhale, bend to the left and continue. Same movement, but the breathing's a little bit different for this one. Inhale, raise the arm, left arm up, bend to the right, hold the breath. Come back up on the exhale. Inhale, raise the right arm up, go to the left, bend. Return on the exhale. Lose yourself in the sensations. Feels like you have weights attached to every finger, pull you down into the stretch a little bit more on the exhale. Uh, and on the exhale, the breath retention. Feel so all beings are experiencing this through your body. So try to deliver the best of the best experience. 
making sure that you don't go to a place of pain and suffering, anxiety and distress for how your feelings affecting everyone to a certain extent and affecting God who resides within. So you want to protect a divine essence in all beings through your actions, thoughts and words. Each iteration brings you a little bit deeper, perhaps opens the body up a little bit more. As you stretch the upper side of the body, make sure you try to keep the underside of the body free of wrinkles as much as possible. Create space on both sides of the body. Do one more on each side. Reach overhead. Sink. And then it's the other side. And then return. So now let's come on to the hands and knees. Cat cow. Inhale, arms the back. Exhale, round the back. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, stretch the belly skin. Exhale, bend the back skin. Inhale, powerful movements. Exhale, really fire up the core muscles to generate some heat. Inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, push the heart forward so you don't jam up the lower back. And try not to jam up the back neck either. Exhale. Keep a little space between your chin and your chest so you don't close off the airway completely. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, push the belly button down. Exhale, throw it up through the lower back. Inhale, push the heart forward as we push, try to push it right through the rib cage. Exhale, push it right up between the shoulder blades. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Next one, come back to neutral back. Raise the right leg up on the inhale. Exhale, swing up to the right. Loosen up the hip. Imagine the leg was a great pendulum that went out of control. But modify the speed and the action as you need to to make it accessible. And then try the left leg. Left leg up, inhale. Exhale, swing it up to the left. And then release. Now make your way onto your belly. You want to anchor down through the hips, the thighs, and the feet, tops of the feet. Join together, hands behind your back. Squeeze the heels, palms together if you can. Now as you inhale, um, engage the buttocks and the upper back and lift your chest. And come back down on the exhale. Up, down. Down, up, 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 down. 
down, relax, breathe in, and breathe out. Feel free to leave out some if you, you know, if you have to stop part way or you can't do them all, don't worry about it. Again, do according to what you're able to do. The arms in front of the body now. So a few options here, a couple options. You can raise the arms and legs at the same time. Exhale, come back down. Or you can raise one leg and the opposite arm up at the same time and then down like this. If you're stronger, you can try to throw your legs up. When the legs come down, then the, the, the belly and the chest press into the ground, just propels your upper body up. So it looks like this. Continue. shoulders, lift up into table, and then bring the seat all the way back behind the heels. Next movement has four, um, the next sequence has four parts. Inhale, come up into high cat. Exhale, cobra, hips come between the hands, chest forward, head back. Inhale, back into high cat. Exhale, all the way back, seat behind the heels. Inhale, roll up, rousing the back. Exhale, arching, flexing the spine. Back up on the inhale, rounding. Exhale, flattening and lengthening. Inhale up, forward, up, and all the way back. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Try to imagine the move of the spine. Imagine you can see right through your skin. Exhale, try to move in a way that keeps this curve, that smooth curve in the spine long. Exhale, uninterrupted. Inhale, up. No big sharp folds at the lower back or the top of the back, the back of the neck. Inhale, up. And all the way back, exhale. Inhale, roll up. Exhale, forward. And back up. And back. So try to move in a way that doesn't bring about any jerks or any sharp movements. And forward. Pull the chest up. All the way back. Inhale. Imagine your wave on the ocean emerging, reaching full height, and starting to crest, and disappear back into the water. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, lose yourself in the sensations, inhale, languid, graceful movements and back, exhale, inhale, exhale, push your shoulders back, chest wide, open, inhale, Tuck the chin, keep the chest still wide, and exhale back. One more, inhale. Exhale. Tails up the neck out of the shoulders, the trunk out of the hips, inhale. And exhale. Rest in child's pose, soften, inhale. Exhale, relax. Next one, I'm going to slide into cobra. So we're going to pull the arms, propel the chest forward, side of the body forward. Come up, hold the pose, hold the breath. Exhale back. The alternative entry, if that was a little bit difficult, is you can come into baby plank on the inhale, drop your hips, then bring the head back. Hold the pose again. Hold the breath. And back, exhale. Just imagine being in the body of the snake. Imagine having that boundless range of motion. Copy the form every way possible on all levels, mentally, physically, emotionally. And back, exhale. 
Try to put yourself in the body and the mindset of the serpents. Come forward again. Hold the pose. Be regal and wise, just like the serpent. Cool and calm. And back, exhale. And most importantly, try to see how God's, again, the magnificence and the grace and the beauty of God manifests in the forms and in all forms, in fact, in their own unique way. And back, exhale. Inhale again. Pull forward, tug at the floor with your arms. Imagine trying to drag the floor towards you. Propel yourself forth more power and ease. And back, exhale. Try to keep your feet together like the tail of a snake. Inhale. One more this way. Hold the breath, shoulders down, head high. And back. This time, separate your knees a little bit, separate the feet if you like. When you come up on the cobra, lift your legs as well. Bend to the knees, try to bring your feet towards the head. And back, we're trying to work all the joints, keep them all radiantly healthy. Inhale, get come forward. Point the toes, come on to the fingertips, get more height, and maybe the head will come closer to the feet. Get length. And back, exhale. You can do a normal cold breath if this is not suitable for you, of course. Inhale, come forward. Lift up. Hold the breath, hold the pose. Everything stops, all the mind fluctuations, the body movements, and the emotions like they're frozen. Then back, exhale. Inhale. Rise up. Show up in every pose. Do the best that you can. And back, exhale. Inhale. The more you try to imagine where that being is at ease, if you try to put yourself in that place, you will eventually find the ease yourself. Back, exhale. Inhale. Imagine the Supreme Witness is watching the Divine Witness. So put on the best, quote unquote, show as you can. Make a divine offering of your practice. And back, exhale. And then here, just relax. Breathe in. Breathe out. Just let go of all fatigue, all effort. Now I'm going to come back up onto the belly and then flip onto the back. So we're doing tucks here. On the inhale, extend the fingers and the, extend the arms over the head, stretch out through the toes, the fingers. Exhale, bring the knees into your chest. Should be two knees. Do the first one nice and slow. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, pull in. Good, just tuck as deeply as you can. Inhale, exhale. We feel free to skip. If this has got to be back issues, if it's in a lot that's moving successful, inhale. Exhale, pull in. More modified to the point that you can do it um, with comfort and ease. Inhale, reach out. Exhale, pull in. Make your body, if you can, this tight, looking as a fist. Inhale, reach out. Exhale, pull in. Inhale. Inhale. Exhale. Next one. Inhale. Reach out. Same movement. But this time, hold the breath as you come into tuck. Try to use your elbows to squeeze the legs closer to the body. The hands come over the knees. Maybe forehead comes to the thumbs over the knees. Exhale. Release. Inhale. Stretch out. Again, come into tuck. Hold the breath. Everything stops again. Concentrate on the space between the eyebrows as you press your thumbs into it, perhaps. Or even if you can't touch, 
then just keep on imagining, keep your attention there at the center of the forebrow. And hold the breath and tuck. Release, exhale. Inhale, stretch. In that moment of silence, when you're holding the breath, just sense how that feels and try to keep your mind in that same temperament, unchanging, undisturbed, unjudging. Release, exhale. Inhale, stretch. Hold the breath and tuck very tightly. Release, exhale. Inhale, extend. Hold and tuck. Release. Let's do one more. Inhale, reach out. And then come into tuck. Hold the breath. Hold the pose. And release. Breathe in. And breathe out. Do a few rolls on your back. If you can, you can place your hands beside your body. Bring your legs back over your head in plow pose. Roll down. And then come up to seated. Pull the body down onto your legs. And now for kitchen ears, just take a little back to the knees and just roll up and the back and forth, up and down. Okay, so do the corner to your condition again. Three times, just elongate, try to make the movement smooth. Use your core muscles to control the movement so you're always moving at the same speed. And no jerky motions, no big hard landing of the back with the legs on the ground. And keep your legs and arms straight. If you're doing a full expression of the movements. And we'll do one more perhaps. One back. Watch the body moving all by itself. Keep on being a witness, merge with that supreme witness. Next time we roll back, get ready to stand, so bend your knees, plant your feet, and come right up to standing. So now let's come to the front of the mat, and then bring hands to the heart. Continue to offer the fruits of the practice, renounce them all. Imagine this as your divine duty to all beings everywhere. Suri Namaskar. Salutation to the sun. Raise your arms up over that. Every movement and offering. Pull down. Bend your knees if you need to bring your hands down onto the ground. Then our right foot back, sink down to the seat. Push the seat in. Come into high plank. Lower down, Ashtanga Namaskar. Knees, chest, forehead down. Chest come to the hand. Glide through to the cobra, right into uh, the wing head, all the way back over the seat. Roll over your toes, Adam Lucas of the Mass, and lift the seat up and back. Then our right foot steps forward. If this is difficult, you can lower the back knee down. If the foot doesn't make it all the way, just use your right hand to assist the foot forward. Again, push the seat in. And then bring the feet back together, chest on the thighs, head down. And now come up, arch back, hands back to the heart. Inhale again, push hips forward, reach up and back. As far as you see fit. Again, bend your knees to bring your hands down, chest on the thighs, left foot back into the plank. Go down, knees, chest, forehead, and then glide through between your arms. Coming up into cobra, try to link the moods together seamlessly like you're doing a divine dance. Imagine this as your divine dance of devotion and love. Left foot forward, sit down to the seat. Feet come together, bow to the legs, a gesture of humbleness. Rise up tall, reach up and back, hands back to the heart. Again, lift the arms, go back, engage the bugs in the upper back to uh, support you in the movement. Fold down over your legs. Right foot back, sit down to the seat. 
gives the thank. Lower down, Ashtanga Namaskara. Glide forward into the cobra. Adho Mukha Savanasana, lift the seat up and back. And then the right foot steps forward to the hand, sink down to the seat. Try not to make big, loud sounds as the feet land between your hands. Engage your core and your upper back. Up over the head, then your back bends, and heads back to the heart. Raise your arms up. Just worry about it. Just think about the extension. Fold down of the frontal body. Open yourself up to create more space. Approach your true nature, which is boundless in its potential. Left foot back and then high plank. Ashtanga Namaskar, knees, chest, forehead down. Right through into the cobra. Adho Mukha Savanasana. Left foot steps forward. Bring your shoulders over the fingertips so that the foot comes forward a little more easily. And bring the feet back together, bow to the legs. Every movement reflecting humbleness, surrender, open yourself up to divine grace, hands back to the heart. Raise your arms up, go back, hips forward. Go down, Uttanasana. Go ahead, flip the right foot back, lower the knee down, sink down to the seat, inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, sink down to the seat, lean away from the leg, arms go down, inhale, come up. Exhale again, allow the head to go back. Lengthen the spine. As you come up, use your arms to pull the torso further above the hips and stay long as you circle the arms down. Try not to then create a big fold across the lower back. Inhale, high plank, and the knees, chest, forehead down. Come forward into the cobra. Adho Mukha Savanasana. Mount the heart between the shoulder blades. And then the right foot forward, lower the seat. Inhale, come up again with the arms. Exhale, open yourself up. Inhale, in every way possible. Inhale, reach up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Arms come down. Imagine your arms the wings of a butterfly. And left foot comes in to meet the right. Chest on the sides. Lower the head down towards the ground. Come right up to stand. We jump in back. Hands back to the heart. And again, reach up, extend, fold down. Left foot back, lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. Inhale, come up. This time, turn to the right. All the movements reflecting your intention. Inhale, and this one, open yourself up, being receptive to all experiences, all perspectives. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, open up to the right. And then come back into high plank. Down the bones, chest, forehead. Glide through between the cobra, uh, into cobra. Adho Mukha Savanasana. Lift the seat up and back. Form a steep curve behind your head, right up to the seat. And then the left foot steps forward, lower the knee down. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, open up to your left. Again, sweep the arms up. Exhale, sink. And one more time, inhale. Exhale, sweep the arms down gracefully. Turn forward, right foot meets the left, bow to the legs. Knees, uh, chest on the knees, head towards the feet. Come right up to stand and reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Yet another variation, be open to all experiences, they all teach us something. Fold down, Uttanasana. So from here, Chest on the sides, join the hands behind the back, push the chest towards the knees, and pull the head down again towards the ground. Trying to get the top of the head to come towards the feet. The chest stays with your legs. If you need to keep your knees bent, keep your knees bent so that the body doesn't attach from the legs. Then from here, bring hands down, right foot back, lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. Raise your arms up, wiggle the shoulders back forth a little bit. Try to get the arms back behind your head for Kapyasana. Form a crescent shape. Move with your head. Uh, with your head, with your body. If you want, you can take hold of your opposite elbows and just allow your head to rest heavily into your arms. Imagine you're trying to lie on your back. Push your chest up, away from the seat. Exhale. Go back a little bit more. Open up the chest. Shoulders back. 
and then come down, hands to the ground beside your left foot. From here, you can come into high plank, or if you can, swing your left leg all the way up and back. Ekapada Adhmukusavanasana. Now keep your leg up if you can. Move your shoulders over the fingertips. Glue the elbows to the body and come down to your chest first if you can between your hands. If you need to, you lower the knee down at the same time. Or you do your knees, chest, forehead to the ground as normal. And then bring the chest up, head back. Roll over your toes, back into Adhmukusavanasana. Push the seat all the way back, melt the heart towards the ground. Here, bounce a little bit, try to get your chest closer to the ground. If you're more flexible, maybe tap your head to the ground. Maybe even the forehead, nose, or the chin comes down. Without bending the arms, push the floor forward with your hands. Be like a dog, loyal to its master. And then raise your right leg up, reach it up all the way. And then again, shoulders over the fingertips. So you can step the foot between your hands softly, not making a sound. Bring the hips forward, right towards the front heel. Again, can take hold of the opposite elbows. Use the arms, the action of the arms rising up or pulling on the elbows to pull your torso further by the hips and then lean back away from the leg. Alternate movements, you can just take your hands to your knee, push into your knee and then lean back or if you can do the full kapiyasana, go ahead. Or to accept that you can. They'll put your place, your body again into a place of, of such discomfort that that's all you think about. The mind is always just thinking about the discomfort. Think more about offering up the pose. The best and the best that you can. And then break the pose. Come back down. Fingertips beside your right foot and step your left foot in to meet the right. Bend your knees again. Land your belly on your thighs. Tusk up your chest towards the knees and pull the head down towards the ground. Push the legs back with your body. And from here, come all the way up to standing. Reach up over the head, arch back as you see fit. Hands back to the heart. And again, raise your arms up, stretch, tusk up the body on the hips, fold down, Uttanasana. Bend your knees as you come down so you, you slide your belly onto your thighs and then push your legs back with your body. Chest comes beside the knee or just in front of the knees, the forehead, maybe even to the shins if your legs are straight. Then bring the hands down, left foot back, lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. So from here, lift up a little bit higher, bend the toes under on the back foot. Left arm up, angle the tone and knee towards the left, and then take your elbow to outside of the thigh. Right hand pushes into your left. So you push the right hand down to the left. Notice how my hands come down, and the body comes up, the body comes higher than the thigh. And then roll the right shoulder all the way back. Continue to push against the outside of the knee with your, the back of your left arm. Try to get your chest up. Those of you who know other variations, go ahead. You can try to take the knee up off the ground. And, or you can take the bind to push your hips back. Use the right hand to push onto the elbow. Use the other hand over the back then to pull the hand a little bit further underneath. And then you can join your hands together more easily. And if you take your knee up off the ground, go ahead. Push back through the left heel. Extend the right hip back. Extend the heel and the crown the head. Exhale, turn a little bit more. Chest and shoulders. Well, um, the right shoulder moves back, moves back. Looks like you're lying on your back eventually. Then break the pose. Bring your left knee down, the toes up. And from here, slide your left toes back. Fall to your left. If you get your left form to the ground, roll to the right so you can get the right form down. Telescope the chest forward. The more you bring your body forward, the more the body lowers. Imagine that you have weights in your hip pockets. And then when the hips feel heavy, maybe the pelvis comes down, followed by the belly, eventually maybe in the chest. Be like a lizard, still sunning itself on a warm earth. Make sure your knee doesn't fall away from the shoulder. Keep, make sure, try to have the knee in line on the foot so you move your foot out if you need to. 
Bring that from here. Come back. You need to bring your knees together, legs so, and then chest down or high plank down into chaturanga. And through to upward facing dog. Lift your thighs, knees away from the ground, your, and your hips and knees away from the ground. Imagine you had a hinge at the top of your legs. And so you're trying to fold the body right in half. Howl like a dog howling at the moon, or like look like a dog howling at the moon. Roll over your toes back into downward facing dog. Sit down again through the heart. Allow the head to come down nice and low. Be like a dog stretching its back. And then bring the left foot forward. Lower the knee down. Sink down through the seat. Inhale, come up. Actually, let me rewind that. Bring the left leg up. In high plank, if you did the leg raise at the first time, then do that. Come forward, shoulders with the fingertips. Lower down the chest between the hands, or bring the knee down if you need to. And come up into cobra. Or if you can, upper dog. Lift the hips away from the ground. The knees away from the ground. Roll back into downward facing dog. This time bring the left foot between the hands. Again, just move the foot forward if you need to between your hands and lower the back knee down. Inhale, come upright. Slide your foot in so that your legs look like a box. Bend the toes under in the back foot. Right arm up. Angle the toe and the knee towards the right and try to get your arm down. So doing it this way as you can see. So you bring your arm across the leg, try to rest the armpit on the back outside of the knee. Left hand push to the right. It starts at the shoulder, but then you, if you keep pushing down, the hands will come more in line with the center of the chest as you raise the body up. And then you roll the left shoulder all the way back. Try to get your left hip to go back, the crown to go forward. If you want to take the bind, use the left hand again to and push your seat back so you can worm your hand underneath. And then you can use your hand, your left hand over your back, pull the hand further through so you can take it more easily. Lock the fingers together or hold the left wrist with the right hand. Pull the left shoulder all the way back. If you find a steadiness, hold your breath. We'll lift the back knee up off the ground. Continue your stretch from the heel all the way to the crown. And then turn on the exhale. All according to your abilities. Modify as you need to. And then lower the back knee down. Come out of the pose. Walk your left foot a little bit more to the outside of the mat. From here, fall to the right. So you can get the right hip on the ground. The forearm maybe comes down. Roll to your left. So make sure your knee is not falling away from the body again. Push the foot out a little bit more so the knee stays over the foot. And then keep telescoping your chest forward. You also don't want to go so that your knee is on the inside and the foot's way on the outside of the foot. Try to keep your knee and your foot in the same line. Be very flexible. Eventually, you can get your chest on the ground. Imagine yourself as a lizard. Still the gaze. Fix the gaze like a lizard that doesn't blink. And then from here, press into the toes, push into your hands, the butt toes, the back foot. Hold your breath and bring the right foot forward to the left. Chest again, lands on the thighs, join the hands behind the back, telescope your chest forward, and plunge the head down towards your earth. Uttanasana, push the body back with your legs. Try and imagine your chest is going below the knees. And from here, Get ready to come up, reach up, arch back as you fit, hips forward, and then bring the hands back to the heart. Good. So we'll do one more variation. Raise your arms up over the head, arch back. And then come down. Bend your knees if you need to, bring your hands down. Actually from here, let's go into Utkatasana. Lower your seat, raise your arms over the head, scoop up the back. Look up, pull the torso for the bottom of the hips, be fierce. 
in a pose, fierce determination, without changing the temperament again. So you can lift your heels a little bit, press them to reach your toes. Then from here, lower down, bring your hands down to the ground. Those of you who, who know Bakasana, you can go ahead, lift the seat, and drop your knees into your armpits and see if you can pull your toes up. If you need something a little bit less so, you can just bring your seat right down, bring your hands down, your arms stay bent. And then you push your shoulder, your knees against the shoulders. You rise up by pushing into your hands. Your head comes up high, your arms straighten, your shoulders over the fingertips. And you keep on pressing your legs against the arms and see if you can flick your toes up, maybe in just one toe at a time. Kakasana, crow pose. If you go forward too much, if you lift your seat, you're going to come right down onto your nose. So again, just think of an upper motion. Close the shoulders and you get the, the knees against the shoulders. Keep your head high. Flick your toes so that you stay engaged. Your muscles stay engaged to stay, to allow you to stay in the pose a little bit more easily and, and longer. And come back down. From here, you have the option of just shifting back and forth off the heels and onto your toes and vice versa. Feel stronger, push into your hands, hold the breath. Let's see if you can come up into tuck three times. If you like, you can extend your legs, bend your elbows back into chaturanga. Or walk back into upward facing dog. Chest open, head back. Roll over your toes, back into downward facing dog. And melt the heart, be like a dog stretching its back. So from here, you can bend your knees, bring your seat back, and then propel yourself forward, shoulders over your fingertips, rounding your back, come all the way back. So you can do this three times like so. Or again, if you feel more comfortable, press firmly into your hands. Roots, um, the roots of your fingers, finger pads gripping the ground, and the heels of your palms. Keep your knees bent, your belly stays, your thighs, hold the breath. Let's see if you can come up three times. Hips over the wrists. Perhaps the next time you can land your feet softly between your hands. Or walk your feet forward. Again, pull your body down into your legs, Uttanasana. Come all the way up to standing, you jumping back. Arch the back, over the, um, arms over the head. And return your hands to the heart. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale. Let go of all expectations, all attachments to the results. Just keep doing your practice because it must be done. As a divine act of love towards all beings, release the hands. So just do a balance pose sequence here. Standing on your left foot, raise your right knee up. Take hold of the foot from the inside, the heel. And if you can, take the arm and the leg at the same time, ballet pose. If this is too much, you can take hold just below the knee. If you can't straighten your leg at all, you can hold the knee, but just try to get nice and upright. But eventually, just try to push into your knee, try to get your leg up more flexible. You lean a little bit to your left and then try to get your foot up close to the shoulder. Keep your fingers and toes at the same height. Look like the letter Y. Look up, be magnificent, poised and graceful like a dancer. Good, now bring the foot forward. Option here to take both hands to the knee and pull your knee towards your chest. Lean back if you can, bend your left knee if you feel comfortable. If not, just stay upright. More, uh, if you want to, you can, you can also do this variation. Push your hand into your hip. Take the big toe with your two piece fingers and your thumb and pull the foot up higher. Push the base of the toes and lean back. And bring the knee back. From here, lean forward. Soften the standing leg. Fly your arms up to the side. If you need to, you can bring your index fingers to the ground. If you start to lose your balance, bring your right leg up higher. And then you can fly your arms up to the side like a gliding eagle. Soar. 
from a great height, just like an eagle does. Imagine being in that body, that magnificent bird. Press into your left foot, hold your breath and come back up. So if you hold your breath in those sticky points where it's, sometimes it helps you with the balance to find the, to find the steadiness. Try it on the other foot now. Plant down through the right foot, take hold of the heel from the inside. Ballet pose or any modification, you can put yourself against the wall. Dharmaji often does this. So just lean back, open yourself up to divine grace. Say with every pose, this is yours and the divine offering. Go ahead and pull the leg up again higher if you can. Lean to the right if you're doing this variation, or take your modifications as you need to. Next one, pull your foot forward, bend your knee again if you need to. So you can take hold of your knee with both hands and just, you can either stay upright, push your chest forward into your thigh, and if you feel comfortable, lean back, or right hand pushes into your right hip. Take your two-piece fingers on the inside of the big toe and the thumb around the outside. Push through the base of the toe and see if you can lean back, pull the foot up a little bit higher. Release, try to make the transition smooth. Imagine your shapeshifter moving between the forms effortlessly. Cad the body down and if you can get your arms out to the side, fly like the bird, the great eagle. Try to bring the left leg up higher. Can you take your index fingers to the ground if you start to lose your balance? Just keep trying. It's the effort that's most important, not the effort. Not, not the result. <laughs> Push into right foot. Hold the breath and come back up. Good. Now from here. Um, so you can see if you can lean forward. Bring your seat up, hold the breath, arms in front, and fall on your fall down into plank. That's not if you've got any wrist issues or anything, so just come down onto your knees, make way to table and into plank. From here, Vasti Stasana. First time, just this the regular one, left hand comes up from the nose, spin towards the right, hips high, arms in a straight line from hand to hand. And you can stack your feet on top if you like of one another or right foot stays in front of the left. Push your hips forward as though you're kite being blown from behind by the wind. Now switch, come back to plank. Move your right hand in front of the nose. Go to your left. Make sure you don't drop into your shoulder. You don't start to hunch your back. Keep your right arm fully extended. You can stack your feet. If you need a modification, just come down onto the right knee, or if it's your wrist, you can come down onto the floor like this. Okay, so again, do what's suitable for you. Come back one more time. This time, push your seat back like you're doing downward facing dog. Bring the left foot, hand in front of the nose. Spin again into your Vasi Stasana. If you want to go further, slide your right toes back. Push into your toes and turn your hip up. Raise your left hip as high as you can. Move your left foot in so you can ground the big base of the big toe. Your left hand, left arm fully extended. And if you're strong through that left foot and left hand, you can just raise the right knee up. Maybe take hold of the knee. Maybe even take hold of the foot. If you have the reach. And release, bring the toes back down, come out the same way as you enter your back into down facing dog, and then try it on the other hand. So any expression you like, come into the Vasi Stasana or bring the knee to the ground, right knee, slip your toes back, and then here just push your hips up. You have to move the right foot in a little bit more. The toes are at the toes of the right foot at a 45 degree angle. And if your hip's nice and high, you have this strength and the foundation to take your 
left leg up a little bit more easily. Push into the base of the big toe, take hold of the knee, if you have the reach, take hold of the foot. Back down gracefully. Turn back into downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. Come down onto your knees into child's pose. Forehead on the ground. You can slip your arms, rest your arms beside your body. Breathe in. Breathe out. Move all fatigue and effort. Now from here, rolling up into inversion. Just lift your seat up so your seat is over your knees and your upper back is pushing forward like looking like a wall. If it's too much pressure on the back of the head, just move your head forward. If you're more apt in the pose, you can bring your hands down, wrists in like wrists in line with your knees, bend the toes under, and lift your seat. Walk your feet forward and see if you land your knees just below you just below knees, see elbows, push into your hands, hold the breath, and see so you can flick your toes up, pull your toes away from the ground. You're in inversion right here. Just pull your toes away, maybe even just dance from one toe to the other. If you're comfortable, lift both feet up a little bit higher. Move the knees closer up towards your shoulders. Perch yourself on your legs, teddy bear. If you want to go further, you can bring the left leg all the way back. Behind your body, the foot hanging towards the ground. And then slowly pull the toes of the front foot that's still in front up off the ground. You can stay there, don't jump up. You might land on your back if you jump too hard. Eventually, if you keep pushing back through that left foot further back, you might be able to get your legs at the same height. If it's too much pressure for your head, you can come onto your forearms. Bring your elbows, make sure you can hold your elbows together easily underneath your shoulders, and then bring your hands forward, interlace your fingers. And place your head between your palms. Even if you don't bring your head on the ground, it's okay. You can hover your head just above the ground a little bit. Again, same exercise. Pulse up and down, up off the heel, maybe. And then once you have the one foot way back, foot hanging towards the ground, heavily pull the toes up off the ground. Hold your breath, push into your forearms. If you push more into your forearms and your wrists, you won't have as much pressure for your head. More advanced practitioners can hold your breath and see if you can get your head up off the ground. Do according to your abilities. Your head was up off the ground, place it back down, hold it for a little bit more. Keep watching the body, moving all by itself. And then if you're up, still come down softly. Back into child's pause. Breathe in. Breathe out, soften everything. Feel the shoulders falling away from one another. Relax. Now roll your way up. Find your way onto your back. Scooch the front end of the mat so that when you go into shoulder stand and plow, you have more um, enough room behind you. So come into shoulder stand, place your hands down on the ground beside your body, push into your arms and lift your seat up. Try to bring your feet all the way back, your hips over your shoulders. Move your hands back a little bit more. Bring your shoulders behind a little bit more so you can join your hands together and place your hands on the mid-back. Push into your mid-back a little bit so your hips come over your shoulders a little bit more. And can you keep your knees, you lift your feet and keep your knees close to your shoulders. If you feel comfortable, you extend your legs. Sometimes it's easier to come up one leg at a time. And if your legs don't come up straight and they're at an angle, that's okay. You can rest your seat on your hands 
Eventually, if you push into your hips and reach for the sky of your feet, you'll find a straight line. Try to get your arms right behind your back, elbows close together as possible. Now, if you have a lotus, go ahead into your lotus. Use your hands to help pull one foot in. Bring your knees closer to your body and then the other. And then again, push your knees up. Try to get your knees higher than your hips. Those of you who know how to, yeah, who can, can take the hands to the thighs, either with your legs straight or in lotus. You have to be right on top of your shoulders. Still the mind. Bring all your attention to the space between the eyebrows. Concentrate on one point, uh, concentrate your mind on that point. See to divine perception. If you have a lotus, you can go into Pindasana, if you know that variation, you bring your lotus against your body. If you have your hips over your shoulders, you can even consider taking your bind, taking your arms around your legs, join your hands just in front of your feet, below the seat. If you don't have lotus, come down into plow pose. Feet behind the head, again, try not to fall down heavily. Pushing onto your back gently. If your feet don't come down, you can keep your hands on the mat back. If your feet come down, you can take your hands behind on the back on the ground. You can even lower your thighs down on against the body and your knees on either side of the head. Go inward. You're trying to close the gates of the senses. So you're not distracted by all the inputs coming into those gates. Can't wait to roll that now. Hands on the ground behind the back, palms down. Come down slowly. The hands move together so the fingers and index finger, thumbs and index fingers are touching. And once your seat lands on the hands, you can keep bringing your legs down to the halfway down. And then, see so if you can lift your back up off the ground, looking like a check mark. Then push your chest up, your shoulders back. See so you can get your top head to come keep your arms, your, your legs charged. Move your elbows back. If it's too much, you bring your legs all the way down to the ground. But you keep bringing your chest up and your head back. Top of the head on the ground and breathe very fast and nose like a sniffing dog. Now if you can, stay there with your head on the ground, but move your feet in close to your seat, and then slip your hands out from underneath, bring your fingertips on the other side of the head, fingers facing away, and lift your back up off the ground in your seat. Slide your head back a little bit closer towards your feet. Turn your hands around, fingers facing a little bit out and towards the feet. You need to stay in Parshva Urdhva Danirasana or take a half breath in and lift your head up. Maybe lift your heels as well. If this is too much, come into bridge pose. Your head and your shoulders on the ground and you lift your seat up. So if you're in Urdhva Dhanirasana, you can stretch a little bit. Try to get your arms straighter, rock forward, try to get your chest forward in front of your arms. Be mindful of your shoulders, mindful of your limitations. And then lower the seat, uh, the head down, and lower back down. Now, once you're on the back, breathe in. Breathe out, let go of all fatigue. Now from here, push into your arms, lift the chin and chest, push into your elbows. Good. Now from here, walk onto your hands here and bend your knees, um, actually 
sorry, <laughs> turn hands around and then just bring your legs out and then slide your leg, arms back. Again, be mindful of your shoulders. Eventually you might be able to get your lower back on the ground if you have good shoulder mobility, but make sure you're careful with your shoulders. Just don't push, don't force to a place where you're in pain and at the risk of injury. Remember, this is not what you want to transmit. One hand at a time, push into one hand, slide your hands back a little bit closer, and then the other hand. Now here you can do purple tanasana, bring your feet a little bit closer, and to move back a little bit. Okay, so from here you move your heels in a little bit, you throw your hips up, try to keep your toes on the ground, your chest up, your head back. If it's too much, your feet underneath your knees, and then bench pose. Chest higher than the shoulders, and breathe very fast. the seat down. Now from here, inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, bend your knees. Bring your body onto your legs. Hold on to your uh, outer edges of the feet. Chest stays with your thighs. You can stay like this. Eventually, if you feel comfortable, you can start to slide your heels forward. Land your belly on your thighs. Keep your knees bent if you have very tight hamstrings. All the attention to the base of the spine. If you're more flexible, you can pull your hands further forward in front of the feet. Reach beyond your feet. And come back up. One more purple tanasana or bench pose. Bend the knees, throw your hips up. Chest high on the shoulders, roll the thighs inwards so the toes come down. And breathe very fast. Lower the seat down. Sit upright, left hand to the outside of the right thigh, uh, right shin, more like it, and then the hand, left, right hand behind the back. Just send it in the back. Inhale, push the lower back up and in. And push against that right shin of your left hand, turn to your right. Revolve around your arm. Lengthen from the base of the spine all the way up to the crown. Make sure your heels stay together, your feet stay active. Push up from the base of the toes and the heels. Come back. Go to the other side, left hand down the center of the back. Against the back, make sure you're not leaning back. Keep the spine straight and tall. You're sitting against a, um, a straight back chair. Right hand to the outside of the left shin. And then turn to the left. Shoulders down. Neck long. Return and lie on the back softly. Ease your way down. Don't come down with a big heavy thud. Put your on the back. Separate your feet. Feet fall outwards. Separate your arms from the body about a foot and a half or so. Palms facing up in the gesture receiving. Just stay for a few moments in Shavasana. Take a deep breath in. Gather up all the tension in your body. Exhale, just imagine it funneling right out of the body into the ground. Inhale again, just pull all the tension, attract all the attention with your, uh, all the attention with your attention. Pull all towards the center of the body. Exhale, just imagine just draining right out funneling out of the body. Inhale, pull all the negativity in your body in whatever forms exist or in your mind as well. All the negative emotions, negative thoughts. Exhale, drop it out of the body. Just feel it just drain right out. Use your imagination to visualize everything that you want to be rid of and just Sending it out of your being. On the next inhale, 
attract everything that you need. Imagine you're pulling it in through the pores of the skin, everything coming in like great beams of light. Exhale, flood yourself with it. Feel completely filled with that goodness. Inhale again. Bring in the best, the best universe, everything that you need to feel grounded, to feel in a state of comfort and ease and contentment. Exhale, fill your whole being with it. One more time. Inhale, attract everything, all the qualities that you're trying to cultivate. Love, compassion, strength, perseverance, wisdom, etc. Exhale, fill yourself up with that. Make yourself a great repository for all this goodness that you share with all beings. And remember, as God is present in all beings and God is within your own being, all these benefits are shared with all. Stay in that mindset of generosity and benevolence towards all beings and compassion towards all. All beings deserving of this, not just your friends and families and pets. All beings, including the animals, including the earth and the sky. For they are our home and they deserve, they deserve our respect and our care as well. Without it, we depend so much on it. So just remember all that we draw from the earth and the skies and this and the waters. Now, take that into the world with you. Just keep the intention of offering up everything. Repeat yourself the following sentence to ingrain it in your mind and heart. I see the divine essence in all beings. And I see the divine essence within me. form of karma yoga that you can do selfless service is to impart the spiritual knowledge that knowledge that allows all beings to recognize their true nature which is divine also which is infinite pure unmutable stainless so now let's come back to seated position come back in a mindful reverent quiet way sit tall once again for the closing. teachers who help who share that knowledge with us so we can share with others thank you so much for coming have a wonderful day sending much love to all of you